kindly, let me grab this to show you around the car. Kindly, our mates who have a car dealership, Stars Monte Carlo, they have a dealership literally right there. They just got one in stock. It's actually leaving already. It didn't last very long and they have another one arriving, but they're just letting us drive this real quick. So thank you, Johnny from Stars Monte Carlo for putting this together because I've been excited about driving this car for ages. Now we actually can film on my phone. Owen's ended up in the car already in the Twizy. Usually we film on that big camera right there, but uh, I actually prefer the way it looks on the phone with the wide angle and I find it just more personal, you and I just chatting around and literally learning about the car on the spot. And so obviously I've heard things, I've, I've read up a bit on, on the car, but these are my initial first impressions. We've literally just got in here to the port and seen the car. So first of all, let's talk aesthetics outside, then let's look at inside and then let's go for a drive. So outside, first of all, the, the thing that struck me the most when it arrived was seeing these rims. The rims, I think in this spec, specifically stand out like crazy because uh, they are absolutely massive. They're 22 inch, I believe. And also here, because they're these diamond cut wheels where it's black in the inner part of the rim and then this kind of brushed aluminum look on the outer part, on the face of the rim. Um, it makes them stand out a lot because the rest of the car is fully blacked out. Now, it looks obviously similar to how uh, an RS6 has kind of always looked. Obviously the base, the concept behind it is similar. It's a little bit of a higher roof line than let's say a, a Panamera Sport Turismo uh, or something like that. So it's more of that classic station wagon look, but really, really cool. I love the way these things look and I really like this spec. Completely blacked out, black pack everywhere. So black round here, black windows, um, as black as you can get on the wheels really. The only silver part are these wing mirrors and that's classic RS, Audi RS. Uh, to have kind of these brushed aluminium or aluminium looking silver wing mirrors. Looks awesome. Even the front is completely blacked out. So you can see the RS6 logo blacked out, the Audi logo completely blacked out, little cameras hidden all over the place. Right now we've got the license plate here as to not drill holes in the front. Um, wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but it looks much better. Uh, so completely black. Now, the design is a little little bit more square, I'd say, at the front than on the previous gen. I really like the way it looks. The biggest difference is the most recognizable is actually around back. Now, one thing which is shocking when you get up close is the size of these brake calipers because they are massive on this car. Carbon ceramics, obviously, but just absolutely stunning. And then round back, so let's talk design round back. You got a little winglet up here above uh, the boot. And this is where you can kind of tell. I think this is the best angle, actually. Let me just place myself right here. That's the best angle for the RS6. Looks awesome. The lights completely redesigned, uh, kind of 3D as they pop out a little bit more. Uh, and these huge, huge exhaust tips, black on this one. And you can see the valve actually through there, which currently is open, which means you're in dynamic mode. And yeah, I mean, our R6 are all about performance, but they're also all about um, practicality. So look at this electric tailgate. And an option here is this stuff which holds your things together really elaborate description there seb but basically um that means you can you can hoon it without things flying around too too much but yeah really really practical car with obviously a lot of power as well so you can put the back seats down you have loads of space and overall it's kind of kept that you know what the rs6 is all about it's a sporty car which you can use every day which is very practical uh, it's also got, wait, oh, let's try this out. This could be quite fun. So you, as you can tell, it's obviously an electric tailgate. But normally, if I have the key on me, which I do, I can swipe my foot underneath here and it's not doing anything. It's meant to. I did it earlier. Okay, the car's unlocked. Swipe my foot. Stay away. No? What if we lock it? Maybe it needs to be locked. Okay, here we go. Swipe my foot. Oh, for Christ's sake. Can we cheat? Look. Swipe my foot. Oh, and look, it's opening. <laughs> it didn't work. Yeah, I know. Normally it's meant to work, but hey ho. Right, let's go look at the interior. Stating the obvious here, it's a five seater. Um, not too much to report back here, apart from this lovely classic Audi stitching. RS logo, very nice, very nice. This is a classic black on black interior. A little screen there for all of your um, climate control. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it's got this fake uh, carbon stuff. We'll talk about that a bit more around the front. Let's sit in the front. I'm also gonna hop in quite quickly and start it up because it's absolutely boiling here. And I'm gonna cook if I don't put the air con on. So, start it up. This is a twin turbo, bi-turbo V8. So, doesn't sound 
incredible. We'll see that a bit more when we're driving because I haven't experienced it yet. But just some starts up. It's, it's a nice sound, but nothing nuts. Um, yeah, so this is this kind of like fake carbon stuff, which I'm not a huge fan of personally. I would rather have either all piano black because this is kind of a mix of both or real uh, carbon because yeah, I don't know. I feel like if you're going to do it, go all the way. Um, steering wheel, slightly more squared off. Very nice. Still got that classic Audi RS feel with the perforated leather. It's quite thin compared to an M steering wheel, which is a bit more beefy, but it still feels really nice. I mean, classic stuff. You've got your lights down here. Everything is a screen. Everything has a shortcut all over the place. You really need to get used to this interior. I just had a little play around in it. Probably do need to get really used to it. So the only kind of somewhat analog part uh, is your temperatures there, temperature gauge and your, God, how do you say that? Fuel gauge, there we go. Had a brain fart there for a second. This is all completely different. So this is all a screen, all digital. So you've got your rev, rev counter there and your speedometer. And you can choose through these little arrows here, different modes so you can have you know, your driver aids, your Bluetooth, your phone, your sat nav. But if you want, you can press the view button and boom, those menus become the priority rather than your driving info. So then you can still go through those exact same menus, but they're just much bigger. That's as simple as I can make it for you. It looks really nice, very clean for a long road trip. That is uh, what is perfect, isn't it? So yeah anyways so that's for the steering wheel this here is just to go through so you know zoom in zoom out for example or if you're on your uh, uh, you know phone settings or whatever it will go up and down through um your radio options and things like that then on this side you've got your phone button your voice activation your voice control and your uh, volume up and down rs mode uh we'll get to that in a little bit actually i'll talk you through these and then we'll come back to the these couple of shortcuts very interesting so what do we have? We have down here, so two screens, traditional kind of sat nav screen. And under here, you have a climate control. So this is only for your climate information. Uh, you can probably see a reflection of me right there. Hello. And that's very much like on the Lamborghini Urus. So here you can control everything. It takes some getting used to, to get exactly the settings you want. See, like I wanted 20 there. And then need to go back down. So it takes some getting used to. Yeah, I don't know. It looks cool. Um, kind of gives it a really clean look. The only issue is when you switch the car off, there's fingerprints, fingerprint marks all over the place. Yeah, it's very nice. It's, it's very cool. It's a bit of a gimmick, but it uh, means that information at least is accessible quickly. This screen here, I mean, first of all, just the way all these screens feel and the interaction you have with them is, uh, I mean, flawless. It's just super, super nice. This one right here is where you basically just have all of your information. I mean, you can even get the bloody weather. It takes a little bit of time, but then pops up. It will give you the live weather or future weather if it decides to wake itself up. It did it a second ago. I was just checking it. Right. Anyways, well, you get the you get the picture. You can do whatever you want. Basically, messages, news, connects to the internet, uh, radio. Everything happens all through here. Uh, all touch screen. Uh, there isn't anything you can use down here to get through it. This just does your volume on off. But yeah, very very nice. Now you do have different shortcut settings here. So that's for your radio, for your Bluetooth, for your phone, and for your sat nav. So you can have your sat nav here and your sat nav, of course, 3D. So there's the Mon Monte Carlo Casino. You can see that we're on the port right now. So no, very very cool, very good layout. The only thing which frustrates me a little bit. Quick pause. Massive yacht coming in the port. 30 border. Is is to get to all your driving settings. So you go here, you go into vehicle, then you have all sorts of different things you can do here. You can adjust your seats, um, but then you go Audi drive select, and then you can choose between efficiency, comfort. Efficiency obviously is if you're cruising, it's the most, as the name indicates, efficient setting. So if you're doing a long drive, um, that will give you the best fuel consumption. Comfort is kind of your everyday mode. Auto is depending on how you're driving, the inputs you put into the throttle or brake pedals and uh, gear changes, it will adjust to that. And dynamic is balls to the wall, let's have a good time. Now, there is a shortcut for that down here, drive select, which takes you straight there. So I, I guess I am somewhat complaining for nothing, but there's so many different shortcuts because then you're in dynamic, let's say, and then you have another shortcut button, which is here, which is RS mode. So here I can go into RS1 and RS2. Two and in RS1 mode, wait, where do I go? I go back in here. There we go. So here I can see in RS1 all of the different settings. So it's you know, engine sound, steering, suspension, engine settings. So you can put it in kind of like the half setting. And then if you go into RS2, you go into everything sports, 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 as much as possible. 
and you can configure it this however you want. I know it's obviously it's not that complex and complicated. I'm just nitpicking here. Um, but for me, for example, where, how do you open the exhaust valve whilst in comfort mode, which is something I enjoy doing on many cars. There's not a physical button here that you can press to do that. You would need to, I guess, go through all of these different settings, set it all up. It's just a little bit complex. And if I find it complex here, park, imagine when you're driving and you're like, right, what mode do I want where? And you have to go through this like a million times. I, I, fi I don't find it particularly intuitive. Obviously it's no big deal, but if I had to nitpick something which frustrates me a little bit, it would be that. Apart from that is a really, really nice interior. I mean, top quality really does feel top quality in here. Uh, smells incredible. It's got a double sunroof, one back there and then one which is closed up here. Seats are very comfortable and there's loads of cool little gadgets. I mean, you've got like a SIM card SD reader, two USB uh, readers there, two more in the back. And gadgets like this, your parking cameras. So first of all, you can just choose any angle. Uh, so front, top, back. Uh, if the back isn't quite wide enough, you can go wide angle back. And this is kind of cool. If you're parking, it'll show you your two front tires. So you can see if you're about to smack your rims into something. It'll show you your two rear tires here. Or if you want a fully 3D look, look at this. You can literally see if we're about to, well, put it in the sea really. And you can go all around it. And it's really cool. I mean, you can zoom in, zoom out. This is awesome. So there are some cool gadgets in this thing and the interior is a very, very nice place to be and the most recognizable place to be able to tell if it's the new RS6 or the old one. Anywho, on that jolly note, let's take it for a drive because I'm dying to drive this. Right, let's do this thing, shall we? Uh, what are we in? I'm, I've, been, I've gone straight balls to the wall. We are in RS mode two, everything off in central Monaco bit contradictory i am aware we will test out comfort mode and other modes afterwards i just wanted to give this a go and also because we have a go for the exhaust i figured might as well so exhaust valves open what are we talking we're talking 591 horsepower v8 by turbo uh, so not a huge power bump from the last generation but it, it didn't that was the one thing it didn't really need it was already so ludicrously fast so it does not 60 in 3.5 seconds and well, I'm about to tell you how it drives. We're going to experience it together. First impressions, oh, yes. The suspension is, uh, well, it's pretty harsh. I know I'm in sport mode two or whatever. And we'll, oh, oh. I mean, that is fine. We'll test out the other modes afterwards. Oh God, you can chuck it about straight away. Look at that, gearbox is, I mean, instantaneous. Incredible. Wow, incredible feel through the brake pedal as well. Carpet ceramic brakes, massive. Oh look, there's the... Uh, yeah, the brake pedal actually, there's a lot of feel through it. So often on these carbon ceramics, they can be very bitey and kind of somewhat unpredictable in uh, at low speed. Right, let's give it some time. I mean, it goes. We obviously can't be... Uh, can't be going around too, too fast. Gearbox, I mean, you don't really feel, and now in sport, everything, I guess you somewhat do, but in general, you don't really feel the uh, the gear shifts take place too, too much. The steering's so light. The car feels fantastic. I'm nitpicking. I'm, I'm not trying to be a hater. I love this car. And the RS6 and the, oh, there's another one, a new one. And the, that looked cool, actually, great. And the, the kind of, legend this guy has become and was actually very close at one point to getting the last generation these are still crazy expensive at the moment but i'm sure they'll come down in value and appreciate it eventually maybe one day fingers crossed boys but yeah it's one thing that right now two things that i've come across which i'm like mm, the suspension is really quite hard um which is a bit odd for a car which is meant to be kind of a you know proper daily driver if you want it to be um, so that's kind of a little bit more surprising. I don't personally mind it that much because I enjoy that kind of sporty ride, but I didn't expect that. What I do mind, it kind of doesn't really go hand in hand with the sporty suspension, is the steering. Even now in full sport, everything is very light and doesn't feel very communicative. It's a bit dead. It's like you're, you're turning and it's going straight into like a duvet, which is taking all the feeling out of it. So that, I'm not too sure about. The gearbox feels great. The brakes are much more communicative than uh, I thought and the acceleration I mean it's not much of a surprise but it is brutal 
I mean, when you go, you just you take off. Um, so, no, I mean, nothing to say acceleration-wise. Let's try it, actually, in, like, everything. Let's go manual mode. Comfort. Should we do that? Efficiency or comfort? No, let's go comfort and see. I mean, first of all, not that it makes a lot of noise anyways in dynamic, to be perfectly honest. It feels quite sedated. The exhaust, but that's every modern car, so we can't blame them, can't blame the R6. Suspension is still kind of... I'm going, to, I'm going over these potholes, or little potholes, on purpose to feel the suspension. And it's still pretty, for you know, daily driver, comfortable car, it's pretty sporty. Again, oh God, the, the visibility is incredible. I mean, because this is a big car, you feel like it is a big car. As soon as you put it full sport everything, it kind of tightens up a bit and then it doesn't feel as, um, as kind of impressive to drive as, large um, and kind of boat feeling and right now in comfort it does it, you know you can feel that it's kind of loosey-goosey a little bit but the visibility is really good they've done a good job and you kind of see through your mirrors as well the like beefy wheel arch is coming out um, which is a nice touch and it feels even though this is fully digital and i know we spoke about it earlier the the dash here they've done it in a way which so it is digital but it feels, you know, somewhat analog. When you do this, not so much, but there, you don't notice too much that it's completely digital, which is quite a nice touch. God, the steering in, if I thought it was heavy in dynamic, in, look, I can literally drive it with one finger. I mean, this is nice if you're gonna daily drive the car, I guess. But I mean, phew, yeah, it's too light for my liking, personally. This spec, though, black on black on black on black, is so sick. Um, I mean, whoever's ended up buying this car is absolutely nailed life. I mean, it's great. I'm not going to lie. I'm nitpicking suspension a bit, steering a bit. But overall, I mean, what a car. A car that can do 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds and is so quiet inside. Um, got a great sound system. The seats are so nice. It's 30 degrees outside, but I'm having cool air. But yeah, it just goes to show the kind of level of comfort you can get through this and the practicality of having a station wagon. No, I mean, they've. this is where Audi really kind of has nailed it with this platform. So good. I haven't driven it hard enough now to feel if it's like leaps and bounds ahead of the last generation. It just feels like a similar basis to the last generation, just improved in every single way, incrementally in every single way. Um, so they've They've really, they've done a good job. As I mentioned earlier, these screens are all a bit confusing when you're driving. I mean, now if I needed to do something, I wouldn't even be able to function it. Because it is quite a large car. You are aware of what's going on around you more than you would be in a Mini or something. So then having to play through all these menus while going is, yeah, not ideal. But overall, short drive around town um, does feel pretty awesome. And the acceleration, we take it for granted almost now. But having a car which is so capable, which can accelerate as hard as this, I mean, it's just a, an incredible, incredible achievement. Now, question is, would you have this over Panamera Sport uh, Turismo? Uh, no way. way. <laughs> well, Never. that's because it's your favorite car. <laughs> I kind of knew the answer to that question when I asked you. So now we're gonna need to try out the Sport Turismo to see what it's like. I really like this. I think they've done a really good job. So. Um, I mean, I was going to say well done Audi, but like they really give a shit what I think. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, awesome stuff. Thank you so much, Johnny. Thank you, Stars Monte Carlo, for letting us drive this car. I like it. There's a few little things. Nitpicking. It's me just really trying to look at every single detail. But overall, what a car. Nothing you can say. Brand new RS6. What